Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, 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 welcome to PTPOG once again. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, good morning, Smitta. How are you? Welcome. Glad to have you with us this morning. I pray that God has been and is with you right now uh, as we continue to walk through the book of Proverbs. Welcome and have a, I hope you're having a good morning <laughs> and I hope that you and pray that you have a happy day today. Listen, want to remind you that we're still having our giveaway. This is our last day for our giveaway for this incredible book, Words of Life, which is our daily devotional that we are giving away. And I will ship this to you if you do two things. I need you to, hopefully you have a YouTube Account. I need you to go to YouTube, our YouTube channel specifically, Practicing the Presence of God channel. I need you to leave a message on this video or any of the other videos uh, where we describe or talk about this particular giveaway. And also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It would really be a great thing for us, and we need, really need you to do that. And uh, it's an awesome book. You would love it. I think you would. It's absolutely for free. So please do that. This is our last day. And uh, this is our last chance for you to win it. So I need you to do that today if you can. So, you know, there's a lot going on in our world today. I uh, have a friend who, or, yeah, yeah, they're friends. I have a friend who uh, is or was a supporter of the current administration in the White House, and they wrote something on uh, their Facebook page, and uh, what they wrote on their Facebook page, on their Facebook page, was kind of in alignment uh, with uh, the current administration's view of the election and their view of the Capitol uh, riot. Uh, and Facebook not only took the post down, they took his, uh, you know, they took his, his uh, whole profile away. So he right now is no longer on Facebook. I don't know if they suspended his, you know, his account or whatever, but he is no longer able to go back and forth, you know, talk or post or read or do anything on Facebook. And I say that to say this, we all must be careful what we say. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, like this particular individual that I'm talking about was very upset about the fact that the president isn't able to use Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or other, you know, that, that that's taking away free speech. The truth of the matter is these platforms are very much uh, individual uh, companies that are ran by owners. They are not government ran. So they can, at their own leisure, decide that they don't like your content and they can take it off and they can remove you at will. They are not held to any government standard in terms of that they are held to their own company standards. And if your post or your words go against their company standards, they can utilize their company standards to take you away. And I, I'm saying that to say this, just be concerned, just be careful about what you say, about what you write, about, about the videos you do and so on and so forth. You can't just say anything, okay? Yes, you have free speech. Free speech means you and I can go out here with a bullhorn and say whatever we want to down on the steps of the capital of our particular city or, or even our nation. Uh, but you cannot just say anything anytime in any place you want to. It doesn't work like that. It's almost like, you know, you saying fire in the middle of a crowded theater when there is no fire, okay? You know, that's not free speech. You are inciting a, a, a problem, an issue, and you will be more than likely held accountable for that. So I just want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, 
they're watching. They're watching. Uh, everything you do on through electronic medium is being watched, is being discussed, uh, it's being mulled over. <laughs> okay. And this has been going on for years. This is nothing new. Okay. So just be careful. All right. Let's look at our uh, text for the day, which is found in Proverbs chapter 30 and verses 7 through 9. Proverbs chapter 30. And we're reading verses seven through nine. This is from the modern King James Version. It says, Proverbs 30, verses seven through nine. Have, have asked, I have asked two things from you. Do not deny them before I die. Remove far from me vanity and a lying word. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Tear for, my, for, tear for me my portion of bread, and lest I be full and deceive, and say, who is Jehovah? Or lest I be poor and steal and violate the name of my God. Today we're speaking from the subject, avoiding the extremes. Avoiding the extremes. Let's our heads for prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your grace today and your mercies are fresh and new every morning. Lord, we need your mercy this morning and your grace. We ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for any uh, impediment, any sin in our lives that, Lord, is unlike you, that would keep us from being connected. And we ask, Lord, that you would please give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Staying away from the extremes. Here, Agur, the prophet, the teacher, the prophetic teacher, I'll say, is giving us a bit of wisdom that he obviously personally uh, utilizes in his own life, which he puts in the form of a prayer. He says, I pray to God, Lord, I'm just asking you for two things. <laughs> That's all I want. I just want two things in this life. I'm asking you, Lord, to keep me from vanity and a lying word and to give me neither poverty or riches. Just give me my portion. Don't let me get too high and don't let me get too low. <laughs> right? Now, what, what, what does he mean by this? He's saying, God, keep me from moving into the area of extremes in my life. The extreme areas of life are areas where it's almost like you feel like you don't have a choice. When you're living in an extreme area of life, it's almost like you're riding this wind that's blowing behind you and you just, you have no other means of doing anything. You can't do anything. For example, in this situation, if I'm rich, I always feel like I got to stay rich. I got to defend my riches. I got to get richer. I got to get more money. I got to get more power. I just, I feel like I'm stuck in this place, ironically. A lot of people don't understand this because most of us aren't rich, but the truth of the matter is, Rich people are relatively paranoid. Many of them are, relatively speaking, paranoid. And they want and desire more riches because they figure or they think that the riches they have is somehow, some way going to be taken from them. And they go to extremes in their lives in order to protect what they have. And they feel like they have no other choice but to do this. They will even take from poor people to stay rich. They will do whatever it takes to continue to consistently draw upon the wealth and riches that they're seeking so badly. On the, at the same token, those who are in extreme poverty get to the point where it's like, I don't care what morals I have to get rid of or have to eschew out of my life. I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna rob, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna do whatever it takes for me to be able to get to a better position than what I'm in. 
I don't, I, you know, I, I just feel like I have to do it. I don't have any choice. I'm poor. I'm impoverished. Look at all the forces that are working against me. I've got to do something. So I might as well break the law and do because I'm already broke. I'm already poor. So the extremes of life are basically uh, positions, if you will, in life where we feel like we have to be involved in certain types of behavior. We don't feel that we really have any other choices that we can make. This is what the wise man, Agar, is telling us. God is telling God, I, I should say, God, keep me from the extremes of life. Keep me from being in a position in life where I feel like I have to choose to live a certain kind of way. I have to choose to be around only a certain kind of people. I have to choose to do certain things that really are against you, that defame your name. Both, in other words, both posterity and poverty are actually dangerous positions to be in. Riches lead to self-confidence and security in a way that go beyond our thoughts, go beyond our uh, what, what reality is and cause us to move into the realm of vanity or lying. What is vanity? Vanity means valueless, vacuous, if you will. Riches really have a lot less value than we think. And that's a whole nother animal. I'm going to get there in just a second. But a wise man will ask for a moderate portion of success to avoid both the dangers of poverty and prosperity. Lord, give us such wisdom. So the first point I want to make is this. The hunt for riches and wealth is often futile and deceiving. The hunt the hunt, the, the uh, what do you call that? The addiction, if you will, of seeking after riches, fortune and fame, wealth, okay, can often be a very vacuous, empty, futile, and certainly a deceiving experience because why is that? Why is that? Why do you say that, Pat Dave? I say that because a lot of people think, well, soon when I get rich, everything's going to be straight. Everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. <laughs> everything's going to be awesome. Everything's going to be fine. No, it's not. 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 <laughs> You're going to have a whole lot more responsibilities than you ever dreamed or imagined. Because now you have the power to do things you never even thought you could ever or would ever do. Being rich is not all it's cracked up to be. Being so-called rich is not all it's cracked up to be. You've got a lot more decisions that you have to make. You've got a lot more responsibilities that are laid at your feet. And you'll come to find out that being rich, as I said, it's not, all, it's not as valuable as you might have earnestly thought. You know, a lot of people think, well, when I get rich, I'm just going to sit back, relax, and, you know, get an umbrella and sleep all day and, you know, rest all night in Hawaii's beach on Hawaii's beaches or something. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And it's funny because Americans, this is, this is, this is a funny thing. Americans really, all they do is work so that they can go rest. Have you ever noticed that? Vacation is what we call it. <laughs> We're working the rest. <laughs> you know, and rich people, <clears throat> you know, they really can't rest. They like to rest, but they can't because they got to figure out how to keep all this stuff that they've collected, all this money that they have. They got to figure out how to keep it secure. They got to figure out, is there anybody trying to steal from me? Is there anybody trying to rob from me? How can I make more riches? How can I make more money? So that if anything happens to this money, I'll, I'll have another place, a stash. To, how can I do? And then you got to think about, well, uh, people want you to be on board with stuff because now that you're rich, people are asking you for money. People are asking you, can you support us? Can you support that? So you have to understand and come to some understanding of who are the people that I really support? Do I really, really want to back this situation or that situation? I mean, it's just, it's it, the responsibilities are endless when you're rich. <laughs> 
People want you to speak out because you're rich. They want you to say something. They want you to do something. They want you, you know what I mean? It's really far and away and above and beyond what a lot of people think. And honestly, riches can be very, very empty. They don't give you back what you dream and imagine you would think they would. Some of us think that riches are safety. Some of us think riches are God. Here's what Proverbs 23 verses four and five says, God's word version of the Bible. Do not wear yourself out getting rich. Be smart enough to stop. Hmm. Will you catch only a fleeting glimpse of wealth before it's gone? It makes wings for itself like an eagle flying into the sky. These riches that many people accumulate, and they know this. This is why I say what I say in terms of them seeking security to keep the stuff that they get. Because they know as quickly as money can be made, it can be easily taken away. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. That's why the rich constantly want to keep getting richer. That's why they constantly lobby Congress and congressmen and senators paying them money to make rules and regulations that are favorable to them in terms of their taxes and in terms of them making more and more money. It's just amazing. That the reason why they do that, because they're scared, they're afraid. They don't want to lose what they have. And the thing is, what do you really have when you have all this money? That's the point that Agger's making. They're really empty. They're riches, but they're really empty. They're riches, but they're deceiving. They're lies. They're not going to make your life wonderful and awesome and completely, uh, uh, you know, void of any pressure. Nope. In fact, it's going to be even more pressure on you. Notice with me, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through uh, 6 through 10, I'm sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. This is God's word version of the Bible. It says, a godly life brings huge profits. Huge profits to people who are content with what they have. We didn't bring anything into this world, and we can't take anything out of it. As long as we have food and clothes, we should be satisfied, Paul said. But people who want to get rich keep falling into temptation. People who want to get rich. Didn't say people who get rich. People who want to get rich. Keep falling into temptation, he says. They are trapped by many silly and stupid harmful desires which drown them in destruction and ruin. Certainly the love of money is the root of many kinds of evil, and some people who have set their hearts on getting rich have wandered away from the Christian faith and have caused themselves a lot more grief than was necessary. Isn't that a powerful text? The desire to be rich, just seeking to get rich, just doing everything I can to be rich. It can lead to a lot of temptations that we fall into because we're focused on getting rich as opposed to focusing on becoming like God. He says, be content with godly living. That's what Paul said. Be content with what God provides. Be content doing God's will and be blessed. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 tells us something very, very clear. Nobody can serve two masters. He will hate the first master and love the second, or he will be devoted to the first and despise the second. You cannot serve God and wealth. Hmm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus speaks to it in terms of God and wealth, but I'm going to speak to it in terms of God and anything. You cannot serve God and something else at the same time. 
you cannot serve two masters. Somebody say amen. You cannot serve God and put him first in your life and then put somebody else up there with him. It doesn't work like that. Because one of them you're going to love and the other one you're going to hate with a passion. Ladies and gentlemen, I see that happening today. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make reference to what it is, but many of you know what I'm talking about. There are many who have created an idol out of people and put that idol in place of God in their lives. And they no longer are following God, they're following people. And the things that people say, they have the words of people in their mouth, not the words of God in their mouth. They've got the words of people. They listen to what people say. Lord have mercy. Don't put people up on a pedestal. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're an athlete. I don't care if they're uh, a congressman. I don't care if they're a president. I don't care if they're a king. I don't care if they're a pauper. I don't care who they are. You don't put anybody in the place of God in your life. I don't care who they are. Ladies and gentlemen, secondly, God calls us to be thankful for what he has provided. This will keep us away from the temptations of poverty. If we're thankful, it will keep us away from the temptations of poverty, but also from the temptations of prosperity. If we're grateful, if we're thankful, if we're hallelujah, if we're blessed and highly favored in our own hearts and minds and lives and spirit, ladies and gentlemen, we won't be pulled away by these temptations. Notice with me, Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. It says this in God's word version of the Bible. Philippians 4, verses 12 and 13. I know how to live in poverty or prosperity, Paul said. No matter what the situation, I've learned the secret of how to live when I'm full or when I'm hungry. And when I have too much or when I have too little, he says in verse 13, I can do everything I need to do through Christ who strengthens me. What he's saying here is I can live in any circumstance or any situation. I can go through anything with Christ who gives me strength. Can you say amen? In other words, he is saying I value Christ as the most valuable relationship in my life. And because of that, I can live in any type of form of situation on this planet. It doesn't matter. Because of my relationship with Christ, I can go through anything. Isn't that a blessing to know? Isn't that a good, awesome way of thanking God for giving us the strength to be able to live our lives through anything because we have him as our anchor. He is our pilot, if you will. Notice with me, Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven, God's word version of the Bible, our last text for today. Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven, God's word version of the Bible says, watch this, watch this. Here's the antidote. Here's the antidote to seeking to be rich. Here's the antidote to get us through life, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, whether we got too little or whether we have too much, doesn't matter. If we have Christ, watch this, we can get through anything. Here's what you do. Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven. Always be joyful in the Lord. I'll say it again, be joyful. Let everyone know how considerate you are and the Lord, and let them know that the Lord is near. Never worry about anything, Paul says, but instead 
in every situation, let God know what you need in prayers and requests while giving thanks to him. Then God's peace, which goes beyond anything that we can ever imagine, will guard our thoughts and emotions through Christ Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful passage? Whatever it is we're going through, whichever state we find ourselves in in this life, whether we're rich or we're poor, whether we're just middle class or no class or low class or whatever class, doesn't matter. We can give all things to Christ who strengthens us. Give it all to him. We can lay them at his feet. We can tell God what it is that we need. And the peace of God will come into our hearts and calm our thoughts and our fears and our emotions. You see, God is actually the greatest psychologist that you will ever meet. He's the great stabilizer in our lives. God is, yes. Did you know that God is a counselor? Did you know that? You know, when you go to the doctor, when you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you know, or one of these counselors, you know what they do. They just, they just listen to you. They just listen to you. And after a while of you talking, they give you a little advice, just a little bit. They don't give you a whole bunch of whole things to do. They just give you a little tiny bit of advice. Well, guess what? God, that's what God does. God listens to you. God will listen to you all day and all night. He will listen to you in the middle of the morning. Come on, say amen. And then God will answer you and he will show you great and marvelous things that you know not of. That's what the word of God says. God will respond. He will give you an answer. And it doesn't have to be big. It can be something very small. But if you're open to hear what the spirit says to you, God will give you great wisdom no matter what your situation is. But the point being is this, God is always there. You don't have to pay him. You don't have to call him up and say, hey, listen, doc, uh, uh, can I see you at nine o'clock on Wednesday? Well, I got a, I got a Wednesday afternoon meeting. I, I can't meet with you, Mike. Uh, let's try two weeks from the day. So you don't have to go through that with God. <laughs> Come on, say amen. God is ready and available 24 hours a day. There used to be a song. There used to be a song we used to sing when we were young, a long time ago in our church. Come on, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. You all remember that song? If you're sick and can't get well, tell him what you want. I used to love that song. I used to love that song. We sang it all the time. People thought it got old. And now I love that song. I loved it then. I still love it because it's true. All you have to do is give God a call and tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you don't need. Just talk to him. Have a good time with him and allow the spirit of the Lord to send his peace into your heart, to calm your thoughts and to bless and calm your fears. God be with you today. Will you trust in the Lord today? Will you ask God, Lord, don't make me too rich. Don't make me too poor. But God, bless me to learn to trust in you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love, your kindness towards us. Lord, keep us away from the extremes of life. Lord, keep us balanced in you. We thank you so much for your love towards us. You're such a blessing. Give us your grace today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, God be with you. God bless you today. If you have been blessed, please like this and share this on your Facebook page. 
And if you haven't already subscribed to our Facebook group, hashtag PTPOG or practicing the presence of God. Listen, we still got this giveaway going. Still got this giveaway going. Words of life, daily devotional. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I want you to have it. You know what you need to do. You need to go to our YouTube channel, Practicing the Presence of God, YouTube channel, hashtag PTPOG YouTube channel, and subscribe to that channel. And please leave a brief comment below one of these videos. I'm going to pick a winner. I'll probably uh, declare it either tomorrow or Sunday. I may do it tomorrow, but we'll see what happens. Maybe in the morning, okay? <clears throat> So I need you to do that today. If you don't have a YouTube channel, you probably need to get one. You don't have to do a whole lot. Just sign up uh, on YouTube. It's not a big deal. Okay? Listen, God be with you. God bless you. I love you. Take care, guys. Have a good one. And please stay away from the extremes of life. But stay with the mainstream. That is Jesus, the living Christ. He loves you. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.